British Columbia is under an extreme weather crisis. The effects of Mother Nature have been catastrophic to residents, farmers, and even the supply chain. My name is Diane Gagne, and here's everything you need to know about the flooding happening in BC and how it's affecting our supply chain. In a matter of days, several towns in southern British Columbia have been dealing with extreme rain, swamp rivers, and flooded farmland. This triggered mudslides that blocked every major highway connecting the lower mainland to the rest of the country. Highways in and out of Vancouver have been effectively shut down, bringing truck traffic to a crawl. Train tracks have been washed out from mudslides and following the storm. This cut vital supply links on a national and international level. Nearly 20,000 people have been forced to abandon their homes and thousands of animals have died. Dairy farmers in flood-affected British Columbia were asked to dump their milk because the mudslides and road washouts have made it impossible to transport goods. Supplies are extremely low. Grocery stores are empty. Medical supplies are scarce. And gas is out of stock. The government has urged residents to not panic buy. BC extends the gas rationing order state of emergency until December 14th, 2021. It has been one of the most severe natural disasters to strike British Columbia in generations, even a year after crisis and crisis has been brought on to the entire nation. The sheer scope of damage has been difficult to comprehend. Climate change is changing things. With climate change, warmer weather might cause even more water flow. Potential for snowmelt and in some regions could even add the overall water totals. A mix of record rainfall from atmospheric rivers, melting snow and boosted freezing levels had led to catastrophic flooding. But what is an atmospheric river? An atmospheric river is a large, narrow stream of water vapor that travels through the sky. It can stretch from 1,000 miles, 1,600 kilometers long, and more than 400 miles and 640 kilometers wide, and could carry an amount of water equivalent to 25 Mississippi rivers. As the rivers cross from the ocean to the land, particularly mountainous regions like BC coast, the vapor condenses into participation, sometimes dumping a month's worth of rain or snow in a matter of days. There's a growing urgency about discussions for climate adaption and in particular, climate resilience and supply chains. Unfortunately, more storms may be on the way. Canada's shipping, trucking and railway sectors are only as strong as their weakest link. A series of setbacks from congested ports to busted highways to broken railway lines has exposed how easy it is for Canada's supply chain to go from seamless to chaotic. Canadian Pacific Railway cars are loaded with prairie grain and fuel as it entered Vancouver last Wednesday, November 24, 2021, for the first time in days after rail corridor sustained heavy damage in approximately 30 locations between Vancouver and Cantaloupe, BC. Both CN Rail and CP Rail have temporarily halted operations on their main lines from Vancouver to inspect and stabilize the tracks. It's putting pressure on an already strained supply system as things back up on Vancouver's ports, which in turn is putting the squeeze on small business owners. There was already a backlog due to the pandemic. Containers are stacking up, warehouses are filling up, and it makes it difficult for companies to get their containers out of the port. At the country's busiest port, a high number of cargo ships are anchored and hampered from unloading their loads while empty shipping containers are rushed back to Asia. Most of these goods are manufactured in Asia and shipped to Canada and the US via container ships. The huge demand for container shipping has pushed up transportation prices and strained the capacity of ports to process incoming goods. Further inland, trucking companies and warehouses are scrambling to manage the unprecedented influx of container shipments while wrestling with their own labor shortages. Manufacturing supply chains that were built around just-in-time delivery of parts, 
have been knocked sideways by shortages and delays. Crews have been working around the clock to repair rail lines, highways, and dikes after mudslides damage key infrastructures and floods, displaced hundreds of residents, and stranded thousands, leaving several dead. On Friday, November 26, 2021, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Premier John Horgan held a press conference to announce the formation of a joint cabinet committee to deal with the flood damage. Trudeau stated that the committee will serve as a model for the rest of the country and dealing with the climate change's repercussions. Both federal and provincial governments have matched donations to the Red Cross for the flood relief. Trains, trucks, and maritime cargo are all interrelated. One cannot work without the other. Freight trucks driving in from industrial storage locations need to return empty containers to the docks. Thousands of empty containers have built up at Vancouver's industrial sites and docks. Delta Port, on the other hand, is unable to quickly load those empty containers onto ships because of the terminals, three berths are already occupied by vessels that are running late. With the holiday season here, Canadians in other provinces might start feeling the ripple effects from this catastrophic event. The extreme weather crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic have shown the need to act quickly to shore up supply chain coordinations nationally and internationally. British Columbia is still in a state of emergency. Not only is the supply chain affected, but many families are in need of support. If you can help in any way, please donate to the following in the links below. How can we better prepare ourselves for natural disasters? How can this affect our already strained supply chain? Don't forget to like and subscribe. Stay safe and we'll see you next week.